Now, Jesus spoke of another sort of water, and I'm going to ask Theodore to come and read a passage from John's Gospel for us. Morning, church. Morning. Today's reading is from John chapter 7, verse 37 to 38. On the last and greatest day of the feast, Jesus stood up and said in a loud voice, If anyone is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as the scripture has said, steam of leaf, living water will flow from within him. Thank you. Thank you. So when Jesus, we've spoke, water is very important. We need to keep hydrated. We need to drink lots of water so we are fit and well and our brains work as well as they can. And also, clean water helps us to keep safe from diseases and parasites. But people didn't know about diseases and parasites and the, import the importance of water for a health reason when Jesus was speaking. And he is speaking at the end of one of three great Jewish festivals. Do any of you know what the three great Jewish festivals are. There is one that happens just before Easter, where, they, where the Jewish people celebrate their deliverance from Egypt. Yes, Amelia? Not sure? Shredder? Passover, good girl, well done. The second one is another one that we celebrate six weeks after Easter when the Holy Spirit came down on the disciples. Yes, Betty. It is Pentecost. Well done. Good girl. The other one you might not know of, and that is the Feast of the Tabernacles. Okay. So the Feast of the Tabernacles for Jewish people is important for two reasons. Historically, it was to remember the time when God brought the Israelites out of Egypt and they were forced to live in temporary dwellings and in Jesus' time, during that festival, little tents and little booths sprang up all over Jerusalem, in the marketplace, on roofs, and even in the temple courts to remind people of their past. They had been wanderers in the desert for a long time before they settled in the Promised Land. Secondly, it had a farming and agricultural significance. It was their harvest festival. And the Jewish people called it the season of gladness. And it marked the end of harvest where all the barley, the wheat, and the grapes had been harvested. And the law that stated it should be celebrated. It was not only to the time for the poor, but for the servant, the widow, sorry, a time for the rich, but the servant, the widow, the poor, and the stranger were all to share in the celebrations. There was part of the festival that's associated with Jesus' words that he said, Take the fruit of goodly trees, branches of palm trees, and boughs of thick trees, and willows of the brook. And each day, the festival, each day of the festival, the worshippers would do this and form a screen around the altar in the temple. At the same time, a priest would take a picture, a picture, not a picture, a picture, which is like a jug of water, and you go to the pool of Siloam just outside the gate, fill it, and pour the water over the altar as an offering to God. So is this all of these things going on that Jesus spoke? And he said, you're thanking God for the water which keeps your bodies alive, but we need to go to him for the water that will quench our soul. We take for granted in 2023 the water that we drink, we have taps, plastic bottles, glass bottles, designer water bottles, still water, sparkling water, flavoured water. And I can't remember a time when the focus on staying hydrated was so great. But in other parts of the world, guys, it's not that easy. It's not always possible to drink clean water, water that's safe. It can involve a long walk, carrying heavy containers to get something that is barely recognisable as something that you can drink. But it is surprising how easily water can be filtered to make it safe. If you can, support Sarah in supplying the filters to the people of Gambia. They will make a huge difference. Clean, safe water. 
But the water that Jesus gives us is the same wherever you are in the world. He's promising the cleansing, refreshing, life-giving stream of the Holy Spirit so that our thoughts and feelings and emotions and deepest desires would be cleaned and refreshed and filled with new life. He's saying, come to me, accept me, and trust me, and I will give you, through the Spirit, a new life that gives you satisfaction, remove your frustrations and unsatisfied hungers, and give you the life that you have longed for. So if you're, thinking, if you're looking for this in your life, speak to one of the team here this morning. And Sloka is going to bring us our second reading now. Good morning, church. Um, John chapter 6, verses 1 to 15. Some time after this, Jesus crossed to the far shore of the Sea of Galilee, that is, under the Sea of Terebias. And a great crowd of people followed him because they saw the signs he had performed by healing those who were ill. Then Jesus went up on a mountainside and sat down with his disciples. The Jewish, the Jewish Passover festival was near. When Jesus looked up and saw a great crowd coming towards him, he said to Philip, Where shall we buy bread for these people to eat? He asked this to he asked this only to test him, for, for he already had in mind what he ha was going to do. Philip answered him, it, took, it would take more than half a year's wages to buy uh, enough bread for each one, of, each one to have a bite. Another of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, spoke up. Here is a boy with five small bar barley loaves and and two small fish. But how far will they go among so many? Jesus said, make the people sit down. There were plenty of grass in that place, and they sat down. About 5,000 men were there. Jesus then took the loaves, gave thanks, and distributed to those who were seated as much as they wanted. He, he did the same with the fish. When they had all, all had enough to eat, he said to his disciples, gather the pieces that are left over. Let nothing be wasted. So they gathered them and filled 12 baskets with the pieces of five barley loaves left over by those who had eaten. After the people saw the sign Jesus performed, they began to say, Surely this is the prophet who is, who is to come into the world. Jesus, knowing that they will be intended to come and make, the, make him the king by, by force, withdrew it again to a mountain by himself. Thank you, God, for giving this word. Thank you, Sloka, very much. So, we have heard of one of the most amazing miracles that Jesus performed during his time on earth. He was tired, and he had been busy preaching and teaching. And there were times in his ministry where Jesus needed to get away. As his reputation as a teacher and preacher and healer grew, so did his following, and he needed to rest. He wanted to be alone with his disciples to teach them and lead them to a greater understanding. However, he'd been followed by about 5,000 people, a huge multitude, many of whom were probably pilgrims on their way to Jerusalem for the Passover feast. When you stop and think about it, it's hard to imagine that all of these people would have gone on their journey without making any preparation. There was no Greg's, there was no Costa on the corner or on the roads as they travelled along. No opportunity to pick up something on the way. And surely even Jesus and his disciples would have had something to sustain them. But, as is always, some some of them would have gone along with the crowd without thinking ahead. 
Perhaps there is a story behind the story. All of the people who followed Jesus, he had crossed the lake and they had walked. And that was a trek of about nine miles. Here to Kelverden, about nine miles, would you reckon? Something like that. So a long walk. Here to Miss. Is it Chris? Okay, that's fine. So just a little bit short of Kelverden. He crossed the lake, they had walked that distance. Most would have had some kind of food with them, surely. But none of them were prepared to share what they had. Unwilling to share, or wishing to keep it for all for themselves. It's possible that Jesus, with a smile, produced what he and the disciples would put by, gave thanks and started to share it. If you see someone doing an act of kindness, guys, what do you do? What, what would you, if, see, if someone's being some kind to somebody else, are you tempted just to walk away, or what would you do? What do you think? Would you help you do something the same, wouldn't you? You would try and do something as well. Maybe, moved by the act of loveliness from Jesus, the crowd were encouraged to do the same. And in the end, there was enough, more than enough, for everyone. Could it be that the miracle of this story is that the presence of Jesus and his goodness turned a crowd of selfish men and women into a fellowship of sharers? It could be that in the presence of Jesus, those whose one thought was to keep what they had for themselves were miraculously turned from keepers to givers. This story could represent the biggest miracle of all, one that changed human nature and altered not only loaves and fish, but also men and women. But there were one or two characters without whom this miracle would not have been possible. We have two disciples with very different attitudes. Firstly, there was Philip, the guy who was local, whose reaction was, the situation's hopeless. We can't do anything about this. And then there was Andrew, the one who said, I'll see what I can do, and I'll trust Jesus to do the rest. It was Andrew who brought the boy to Jesus, and by doing so, made that miracle happen. No one knows what will, what will happen, or what will come out of it when we try to bring someone to Jesus. Just think this week, who could you bring to Jesus? Then there was the boy. He didn't have much to offer, but out of his offering, Jesus found the materials for a miracle. There would have been less shining deeds in history if that little boy hadn't turned up or refused to share what he had, his loaves and fish. The truth is Jesus needs us to bring what we can to him. We may not have much to bring, but he needs what we have. It could be that the world is denied miracle after miracle, triumph after triumph, because we will not bring to Christ what we have and who we are. Today, we are celebrating harvest. In the basket here, we have some grains of wheat. The grain of wheat is tiny. It takes 16,000 grains of wheat to make a pound in weight. But sown in the ground, this tiny little grain will produce a plant. Its roots will grow downwards. And then it will grow leaves and it will produce heads of wheat. This little grain, each plant, will produce on average five heads of wheat. And on each of those heads, there will be 50 more grains. Five times 50. What's that, guys? You can do five times 50. Five times 50. 
times 50. 250. So from that little tiny grain, put in the soil, let God do the rest, you can produce 250 more grains. In the building this morning, there are just 100, under 200 people. 200 grains of wheat. And all that we need to do is to place ourselves in God's hand. You might feel as small and as insignificant as that tiny grain. But in this grain is the DNA to produce so much more. Just imagine what DNA is in you and what you could produce. All the wheat needs to do is place itself in God's hands. God will do the rest. The farmer will work very hard to nurture it, feed it, protect it from disease and pests. But God makes it grow. If, just as we are, we would submit ourselves into service for Jesus, there is no saying no telling what he could do with us or through us. We may not think that we are worth anything or feel embarrassed that we have little to offer, but there is no reason for failing or refusing to bring what we have or who we are. Little is always much in the hands of Christ. Let's pray. Father God, on this Sunday morning, at the beginning of October, we commit ourselves and our lives to you. Lord, give us the courage and the belief and the faith that you will give us the strength, the power, and the wisdom to do what you would have us do for you. We're about to sing, Lord, that we have no gifts have we to offer. But Lord, we all do. So bless those gifts. Encourage us to use those gifts in the service of your kingdom here in Colchester and across the wider world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.